Shalom. This week's Sedra Sedra Schukas. Professor Benjamin Savakal of Aros University in Denmark remarked about the growing shortage of water in the world. There will be no water by 2040, he said, if we keep doing what we're doing today. In explaining why water is growing short in the world, one explanation points to energy use and the reasons for the huge pressure of Earth's water resources, including an increasing demand for energy due to expanding global population and economic developments. The generation of electricity is one of the biggest sources of water consumption in the world. Now, in our Torah portion this week, we learn about scarcity of water. It says that the community was without water and they joined against Moshe and Aaron. The people quarreled with Moshe, saying, if only we had perished when our brothers perished at the instance of Hashem. Why have you brought Hashem's congregation into this wilderness for us? and our beast to die there. Why did you make us leave Egypt to bring us to this wretched place, a place with no grain or figs or vines or pomegranates? There is not even water to drink. In his commentary to these verses, Rav Sajigon sets aside the Jewish people's complaints about food and focuses on their complaints about a lack of water. Rav Sajigon made an unusual comment saying there wasn't even water, according to Pasuk, assuming that while land might be barren of grain and figs and vines or pomegranates, it would at least have water. Department of Chemistry Assistant Professor Nicholas Barato studies biochemistry and explains why water is an important molecule for life here on Earth at the cellular level. Water is of course critical for life and most are familiar with the fact that humans are composed of approximately 60% of water and that this molecule is utilized as the main component of our blood to remove waste, protect the brain and control temperature. During British Mandate Palestine, the British authorities made finding Menachem Begin, head of their good, a priority. He had a death sentence issued for him due to his efforts to rebel against the British. During one horrible episode, the British came to, his, to the house where he was hiding in and stayed for four days while Begin, without water, hid in a secret compartment in the attic. It was a torturous time. Begin explained his pain. There was a secret compartment in the little house. It was admittedly primitive, and a sharp eye could have discovered it. The troops made a thorough search of the house. The worst of it was there was no water. I had gone without food in Lushishi in Europe and elsewhere. Here, for the first time, I learned what it meant to go without water. Hunger and thirst, it's best to know neither. But if I had to choose between them, I would unhesitatingly choose hunger. Prolonged thirst is terrifying. It was August, the place was stifling, and there was not a drop of water. Rosajigon's focus on the lack of water is understandable when we imagine the fear and pain of the Jews walking through the desert without water. It doesn't excuse their lack of sensitivity in how they express themselves, but it helps the Torah student understand their feelings of desperateness that led them to their rebellious complaints. The lesson that for us is that no matter how much pain we are in, we cannot abandon our faith in God and commitment to follow God's Torah. That was the mistake that the Jews made in our Torah portion. Shalom.